Hello there. Welcome to the That's the Story Halloween Special. I'm Ronnie, and this week we've got spooky tales, spooky songs, and spooky competitions. But let's start off with our old haunted house. The old house was lonely. It was extra specially lonely at this time of year. Mostly because it got to see so much going on and not really having anything to do with any of it. The old house was lonely. It would be nice to have a family living in it. But the old family were long gone. Long gone. They left ages ago. Actually, it was the day before ages ago they left. The old house was lonely. Lonely and bored. (gasps) Halloween, dark, dim, a little bit scary. And the old house was lonely. No one had lived in the old house for ages. And the old house was in a little bit of a mess. Quite a state, to be perfectly honest. A few boards loose, some even missing. The odd cracked window. Some window's glass was gone completely and the old curtain inside blew in and out of the empty hole where the glass used to be. There were a few loose tiles. The chimney had seen better days. And the front door. Well, there were splinters, more than just a few. And as for the front deck, cripes, you wouldn't go sliding over that on a bare bum. Boy, did that have splinters. The old house was lonely. It was Halloween night and the old house was lonely. All those children, all that trick-or-treating, and there it sat, all alone, on Halloween night. The old house was lonely, but it was about a quarter past fed up that the old house had an idea. It was a grand idea. No longer would it be lonely, yes. The old house thought to itself, that's a fantabulous idea. And so the old house got to work. It struggled and it strained. Its old weatherboards creaked. Its window frames cracked. Its veranda groaned while its very foundations moaned. But slowly, very slowly, the old house began to rise up off the ground. It gave itself a jolly good shakedown, like a dog does when it comes out of the bath and trotted off down the road, trick-or-treating with all the other children in the street. Trick-or-treat! 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 It was the old house's best Halloween ever. Even won the prize for best costume. Ever wondered what Dracula's house might look like? You rang. Step into my dungeon and see all my monsters, my ghouls and my werewolves too. <laughs> To step through the door and see all the gore And see my collection of poo Come inside! Visit my castle, it's really no hassle To show you around all the scenes Step this way! The secret passages and secret messages And listen to all of the screams Welcome to Dracula's lair Come inside! When there's nothing really to fear Really? There's nothing? Cause down underneath I haven't got teeth, and I'm afraid of the dark. Walk into my haunted old house. Come in. Where the scariest thing is a mouse. A mouse? Welcome to the scariest place. (laughs) Where you're sure to get a smile on your face. (laughs) You'll walk out laughing to see monsters bathing with bubbles and rubber duckies. So funny. Welcome to Dracula's lair. Come inside. Where there's really nothing to fear. Nothing at all. Cause down underneath, I haven't got teeth. And I'm afraid of the dark. Walk into my haunted old house. Come in. Where the scariest thing is a mouse. Who said mouse? Come inside and look about. Take it all in. And if you need anything, just shout. I'll be waiting. If you would like to win yourself a $100 art pack from Gordon Harris, then draw me a picture of what you think Dracula's house would look like. Have your caregiver or your school teacher take a photo of it. Pop along to our website, that's thestory.co.nz. Click on contact us and you can upload your picture from there. I will pick my favourite one and it will win you a $100 art pack from Gordon Harris. Now, Halloween. Let's have a wee bit more of it. It was Halloween, 
and Sasha and Tim were going trick or treating. They'd been making their costumes all day and this year was going to be very special. This year, as long as the children all stuck together and kept a good eye out for one another, they were allowed to go trick or treating without adult supervision. They were six kids in all that lived in the bottom of Rata Crescent. The twins, Eric and Eddie, lived next door to Sasha and Tim and across the street in the big greenhouse lived Pele. Robin lived at number 12. She had four cats. Anyway, evening soon came around and the Rata Crescent kids all met up at Pele's house with their costumes on and their goody sacks ready. They looked magnificent. Sasha was dressed like Frankenstein. She made big bolts from the tops of washing up liquid bottles, painted them red and stuck them, via elastic, onto the sides of her neck. Sasha and Tim had invested in some face paint and Sasha's face was grey and covered in red sticky scars. Tim had gone for the gothic vampire look. He was dressed totally in black and had bought a long black wig from the $2 shop. His face was a deathly white and a small trickle of fake blood dripped from his plastic fantastic fake vampire teeth. Eric and Eddie were dressed as demons. Eric had borrowed his dad's garden fork. It looked exactly like the devil's pitchfork. Eric and Eddie had gone all out and had hired their demon costumes from the fancy dress shop. Eddie's costume even had a long forked demonic tail that dragged along behind as he walked. Palais was dressed as a clown and had recycled his costume from the party he went to last month where he really was a clown. This time, however, the clown had turned bad. Pele's big fuzzy clown wig was gelled up into a series of eye poking out spikes. Fake blood dripped from his eyes and his baggy clown pants and braces were torn and dirty. Where Pele smiled you could see where he'd stuck bits of black paper over his teeth. He was bad, 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 bad to the bone. And as for Robin, well, not to be outdone by her friends, Robin had dressed up as a witch. She was the wickedest witch in the whole wide world. She'd borrowed some of Sasha and Tim's face paint and had painted herself green. She'd made fake warts out of a bit of blue tack and stuck them all over her face. She'd got a big witchy nose from the joke shop and borrowed her mum's black shaggy wig. She'd ripped up a black rubbish bag for her dress and wore her red and white stripy socks underneath. She totally looked the part. And so with everybody ready, the Rata Crescent kids were off, off to trick or treat and hopefully bag themselves a good supply of lollies and maybe even money to see them through the next week or so. Off they trundled, making their way around all the houses in Rata Crescent. They'd walked up the pathway, knocked politely on the door, and when the person inside answered, they all yelled out in unison, Trick or treat! Because most of the folks in Rata Crescent knew exactly who it was a knocking on their door. They were being given treats so far, all of the time. Mrs Plymouth had put a Milky Way into each of their goodie bags, Mr Scott at number 10 had given them a lollipop each, and Mrs Witty had even made them some homemade fudge. Mm. This is fantastic, said Eddie. Why can't we do this all the time? It's kind of a reward, silly, said Robin. A thank you, if you like, for all the effort we put into our costumes. We're like entertainers in a way. The kids continued on. Old Mr and Mrs Tule, who were usually a little bit grumpy, were exceptionally kind. They gave each of the children a $2 coin. Very impressive. However, as the trick-or-treaters continued pacing the pavements, they began to get the distinct impression that something wasn't quite right. Sure, the trick-or-treating was going great and their goodie bags were getting fuller by the minute, but something just didn't quite feel the same. Sasha looked around. Eric just suddenly stopped. Eddie walked into the back of his brother. Pelé stared and scratched his spiky wigged head. Tim started counting. Robin, as was usual, took control. Hold on a sec, she blurted out as the gang stopped right outside Mr Travis's house. Now what's going on here? Tim started to count a little louder and as he counted he pointed to each member of the group. One, two, Three, four, five, six. 
Seven. How can there be seven of us? The group looked at each other. There was a Frankenstein, a goth, a weirded out bad clown, two demons, a witch, no, uh, two witches, both with green faces, warts and long pointy noses, both wearing plastic bin liners and red stripy socks. The group moved away from the two witches. Okay, said Sasha, now which one of you is Robin? The two witches looked at each other and then looked back at the group. I am, said Robin. No, I am, said the other witch. No, said Robin, I am. Sasha, you helped me paint my face, you know it's me. No, don't listen to her, she's an imposter, said the other witch. Robin began to bubble just a little. Her chin began to quiver and tears weren't far away. I'm Robin, she said and ripped off her wig, revealing her giveaway blonde hair. Well, if you're Robin said Eric and Eddie in unison. Then who is this? And they grabbed for the wig of the extra witch. Help us, Pele! They cried as the wig, no matter how hard they pulled, would not come off. Sasha wet her fingers and rubbed at the face of the extra witch. The green paint wouldn't come off either. Who are you? asked Tim. And why are you pretending that you're part of our group? The extra witch looked sad. You won't be able to pull my hair off, you know. You won't be able to wash my green face off. My warts are on forever and, well, these clothes, I wear them all the time. (laughs) You see, I'm a real witch. Pull as hard as you might. This is me and I am what I am. Now the real witch looked as if she was about to cry. But if you're a real witch, said Robin, having now composed herself, then why are you trick-or-treating with us? Don't you get it, replied the witch. This is the only night of the year, Halloween, where I can walk around unnoticed, where I can knock on people's doors and they're actually nice to me, pleased to see me even. And well, I like lollies too, you know. It's not often you get given things as a witch and you guys look like you're having so much fun, I just wanted to be part of it. Pele looked inside his bag of goodies. He emptied the contents into the witch's own bag. Here you go, you can have mine too. I can easily get more. Eric and Eddie then did the same. Sasha and Tim looked at each other a little reluctantly, but then followed suit. And Robin, well, she handed the real witch her whole bag of goodies. Right, let's go then. Robin took control of the situation again. Mr Travis is waiting for us. I can see his curtains twitching. And all proceeds go to the witch. Right, guys? Now, witchy poo, what's your name? The real witch beamed, linked arms with Sasha and sauntered up Mr. Travis' path with the Rata Crescent kids. Just call me Treaty, sweetie, she said as she rapped loudly on Mr. Travis' front door. Treat or treat! Oh, it wouldn't be a That's the Story show without a little bit of Norbert and Milo now, would it? Hey Norbert, looks like your rocket's bigger. Yeah, I realised that I needed more space for snacks. Now that it's filled with chocolate chick biscuits. What are you doing? I'm summoning a brand new, amazing joke that's perfect for the occasion. You what now? Got it. What is fast, loud and crunchy. What? A rocket chip. <laughs> now I really have to get off this planet. Okay, I think it's about time we had another Halloween song. This one's got a video with it. Have a listen to this. It's a little bit spooky. Oh my goodness, it was the most terrifying parade of ugly people I have ever seen in my entire life. Witches, warlocks, goblins, monsters, werewolves. Oh! There were ghoulies, boolies, boogie woogie woolies, ooga booga wooga maloos. There were witches, wizards, warlocks, lizards, a thing in evil or war too. It was such an ugly sight, door to door in the dead of night. The worst I'd ever seen on the night of Halloween. There were sloth goblins and novel of balloons and nicky dicky nicky dicky doos. Hepple, hepple, hepple lumps and pineapple lumps, people dressed as poos. It was such an ugly sight, door to door in the dead of night. 
The worst I'd ever seen on the night of Halloween There were vampires, umpires, Frankensteins, mummies and dummies and dads There were ugly, scary creatures, even zombies dressed in rags There were bats and rats and cats and hats and dogs and frogs and stuff Aliens and rubbish tins, and some looked pretty rough It was such an ugly sight, door to door in the dead of night The worst I'd ever seen on the night of Halloween Sometimes it's a really good idea to clean up under your bed Gosh, there's a lot of junk gets under there, eh? Heaps of it I'll just chuck it under the bed, Nairi said to herself as she slid the unwanted remains of her toast beneath her flowery valance. Nairi often slid unwanted things under her bed. Her mother said that it was probably the most annoying habit that she had out of all her other annoying habits that was. Nairi giggled. Hiding things under the bed was perfect. Out of sight, out of mind. That's what Nairi's grandmother said. Why, only last week Nairi had hidden her swimming kit under the bed and when it had come to swimming day at school, Nairi hadn't been able to go because the swimming kit could not be found. Perfect! Nairi didn't really enjoy the cold outdoor pool anyway. The underneath of Nairi's bed held all sorts of unwanted paraphernalia. Old school textbooks, way overdue library books, her school disco costume, the dolls that she no longer played with, for Nairi was far too old for that carry on, and a ton of uneaten toast and biscuits, as well as the rubbish from all the eaten stuff too. Chip packets, cans of drinks, lolly wrappers, you name it, you could bet that you could find it under Nairi's bed. But one day Nairi lost something, something that she actually needed. Nairi lost her pink ballet slipper. She'd put both her dancing shoes down by the side of the bed and one must have slipped below. Nairi lay down on the floor and slid her arm underneath the flowery valance. She moved her arm from side to side, feeling her way around who knows what. The ballet shoe wasn't there. Nairi stretched herself under the bed even further. She stretched both her arms in amongst the strangely unidentifiable lumps and bumps and shapes that made up her discarded and unwanted things. It was no good. Nairi couldn't reach to where the shoe had got to. Nairi shrugged and shuffled her shoulders and squeezed her entire upper body under the bed. And then, gobble, 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 the bed groaned and belched and poor old Nairi disappeared. You know where, under the bed. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you had a really fun time. Do come along next week. Until then, ka kite ano. I wanna hear the one about the big old plum tree. I wanna 